Hello and welcome to week 12 of Friday Football Fever. I'm Jeff Jones and guys, believe it or not, this is our final 30 minute show of the season, though we will continue to cover the high school football playoffs as a part of our 10 p.m. KBU newscast. Now this week kicked off the playoffs in our state and tonight we saw one of the most dominant teams in town line up against one of the best storylines in town. LBJ won its final five games of the season by an average score of 78 to nothing. They've been simply incredible. They're the reigning state runner up, but Elgin, well, they have a great story. Elgin went 0 and 10 last year and after an offseason where the team completely bought in, they've won seven games and are in the playoffs. It is tradition versus the turnaround, the champs versus the comeback, dominance versus destiny. It doesn't scare me at all because they're just young men like we are. They put on their pants the same way, so we're going to go out there and we're going to fight. They have some uh, good players, you know, some star athletes that we have to focus and try to shut down. They fly around, you know, they're fast and they're physical and they're long and athletic. That just doesn't scare me. I, know, I have confidence in, our, in my team, in my defense, in my offense. We know they're really good and we're, and we're up for that challenge, but we're going to show everyone that we're really good too. I've been to playoffs all my years of high school, so I'm pretty used to it right now, but around this time of year, that's when we know it's when to go home, so it's a whole different tissue you bring every day to practice every Friday night. We can only control ourselves. If we go out and execute the way we know we can execute, then we have a chance. We really just lock in in the playoffs and we really just focus because it's, it's, it's when to go home. We're trying to go back to that big spaceship in Dallas. It's the game of the week, sponsored by Urology Austin. The road to that big spaceship in Dallas starts tonight, and one of the guys who hopes to board the UFO for the first time is sophomore quarterback Ali Scott. Great job staying calm after the fumble snap and just run into the paint. Then it was time for the Jags defense to show exactly why they ended the regular season pitching five straight shutouts. Fatu Makuba getting his college paid for by some lucky school one day. He took that interception 55 yards to the house. Later in the first half, the defense found the end zone once again. Two linebackers teamed up for this one. Trey Trey McCutcheon forced a fumble and Jaquan McGee finished with the easiest scoop and score of his career from about a half yard out. Make it six straight shutouts for this team of extraterrestrials. J Jags win 69 to nothing. So now that you have seen the highlights on offense and defense, you know the score to our game of the week. But my friend Corey Mose had a chance to dig even deeper into this one. He just finished talking with some of the Jaguars winning players and head coach. And Corey, I know you're, you're all bundled up. Hopefully you got some uh, hot information for us. What you got? Yeah, Jeff, let's be clear. You're not going to see my hands come out of these pockets because it's cold than a mug out here. Good evening, beautiful people. Let's talk about this game, okay? The narrative coming into tonight was that LBJ hadn't played anybody. That's why they've been blowing people out all year long. Well, folks, I think it's time to start saying maybe they're just a really good team. Coming into tonight, they've outscored their opponents by 418 points on the season, and it added 69 tonight. Now, scoring all those points, you're behind the bell cow. Cedric Alexander. He actually eclipsed 5,000 yards rushing here tonight. I was able to ask him about that historic mark and also what it mean to him to have a long playoff run. Something special, man. Having a long playoff run, I've been through it the last two years. It's something special. They doubted us in district. They said we couldn't blow people out. We can blow people out in the playoffs too. We did our thing out here tonight and I'm proud of, my, I'm proud of everybody that contributed to it. And I just want to go all the way to state. Let's get it. And Latrayvon, let me pull you into here. Y'all score a lot of points, but also shut out Elgin tonight. I know at the end of the game, with one minute left to go, they had a chance to score. Y'all came in and got the interception. How important was it for y'all to get that shutout? Uh, y'all coaches told us early in the week that a lot of people didn't respect our defense. They felt like we were only getting the shutouts and the dish again because of the talent level and stuff. But we came out here today and showed them that we can do this against anybody. We're ready for any opponent that step up in front of us. Hey, Coach Finner, you got these boys ready for this game here tonight. And when I talked to you a couple weeks ago, you mentioned how you love how this team has fun, but they know how to lock in when it's time to lock in. How do you think they locked in tonight? Yeah, I mean, they locked in, you know. The performance was great, and that's what it's really all about. You know, it's about them having fun, but also being able to be disciplined in their assignments and do their job. And that's the expectation, and it's showing that that's the standard. And in that huddle now, when you picked up that by district trophy, you said this is just the beginning. What do you mean by that? Well, you know, I just look at the last two years you know and uh, we want to make this a, a traditional thing year in and year out so that's the first one you know and so that's got to be our mentality is we excited about that one but we want to go all the way so I just want to keep them humble and keep them focused and let them understand you can have this feeling for the next five weeks well coach to have that feeling you got to start tonight that's exactly what y'all did great job here tonight and good luck next week Appreciate you. Thank, you. thank you coach 
Now, one thing I noticed on the sidelines with these blowouts, they're not just wasting these games, okay? On the, at the end of the third quarter, LBJ scored on a busted play, but Coach Finner wasn't happy. He wanted his team to execute in every facet of the game, and they'll look to do that next week in the second round of the playoffs. Back over to you, Jeff. Corey, I hear that wind whipping around. I'm not going to keep you any longer. Sprint to the car and turn the heat on high. I'll see you back here at the station. <laughs> Guys, Lake Travis is easily the best 6-4 and four team in the state and maybe the nation. Their four losses came to teams with a combined two losses. If anyone knows playoff caliber competition, it's the Cavaliers. Tonight they faced a Round Rock team that sent them packing in the first round back in the 2020 playoff season. Third quarter of this game and a huge play on special teams from Guillermo Lavin. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I'm laughing it. The senior with a block punt and on the very next play, a little trickery. Two quarterbacks on the field for Lake Travis. Bo Edmondson pitched to Caden Leon, who threw a jump ball to six foot four Seth Galbraith. That put the Cavs up 10 to, uh, 14 to 10, and they didn't just step on the gas. They mashed through the floorboard and started running like the Flintstones. Lucas Casey Moore with the interception there, which set up one of my favorite moments of the night. Tight end Sam Self with a toe tapping touchdown, and then Sam found a military member on the sideline to high five on Veterans Day. Lake Travis gets redemption. Final score in this one, 35 to 10. Oh, fantastic. So proud of our kids. Uh, Ground Rock's an awesome team. Incredibly physical. We knew they would be. Um, you know, I'm just very, very proud of our kids, especially in the second half, to, uh, to be down at halftime and come back and play that way was fantastic. I'm going to tell them to enjoy this tonight. Uh, we know that we're going to get steel with their great team. We already played them once this year and it didn't go our way, but I love our guys are playing right now. Can't wait for that rematch against Steele. Hey, to the playoff scoreboard for the first time this season. Georgetown beat New Braunfels Canyon 21 to 10. That's an upset win for the Eagles and earns them a second round matchup with Magnolia West. Lockhart, a team that went two and eight last season, beat San Antonio Burbank and they beat them bad, winning 62 to seven. The Lions are on to the second round. More scores coming your way and well, it looks like the local guys did not do well on this set of scores. Land passes falls to Somerset. Their season ends 27 to 17 in the first round in Fredericksburg. The Billies, they have to make that drive back from San Antonio after falling to Davenport 36 to 6. Bowie made the trip over to Vandergrift to play the Vipers, who brought a nine game win streak and some serious game faces into this one. First quarter, Braden Buchanan, who signed a Baylor bas uh, baseball scholarship this week, showed off the arm and found Beck Orman. Beck, I'm in the red zone, baby. So why don't you join me? They sure did. Buchanan snuck in from two yards out, but the Bulldogs are battle tested. They came in from one of the top districts in the state. Connor Keaton to Nehemiah Smith Livingston. Living right. It was tied then, but Vandergriff will win this one 28 to 14. Dripping Springs has looked great all season long. The Tigers hosted Maynard tonight, and Jack Tindall tends to score. This guy is only a sophomore, but he is nearly untackleable, if that's a word. If not, just roll with it. That play set up a score. Maynard's Quentin joined a rush for over 300 yards last week. This long one came up just short of the end zone. The Mustangs did not score on that drive, and it hurt them. Dripping get the ball back. Austin Novosad found Joe Moreland, and the Tigers found a win. Final score in this one. Wow, look at that, 69 to 14. We saw tons of Thursday games this week. A couple of updates from last night. Weiss failed to DeSoto 37 to 20. That score looks a little more lopsided than the actual game was. The Wolves held with one of the best teams in the Dallas area, but their season comes to a close. And Westlake, come on now, you know what Westlake does. They win and they win big, especially in this time of year. They beat Cedar Ridge 58 to 10. We have updated you on nine games so far, and we have much more left to show you. Scores, highlights, our Band of the Week, and our Play of the Week nominees are all coming up next.
Welcome back to Friday Football Fever. It is time to bring in my friend Tyler Feldman. And Tyler, after an early season loss to Hutto, some people around 5A might have thought Liberty Hill was slipping. They spent the past two months proving that they have definitely found their footing. I'd say, Jeff, they found their footing and then they went on a very long run. Seven straight wins, three players, each with more than 700 rushing yards. And they're averaging a cool 51 points per game. And tonight, that high-powered Panthers offense would face a San Antonio Highlands team that's given up 40 or more points already six times this season. Yeah, there's Liberty Hill head coach Kent Walker. He and his Panthers have scored 40 or more in eight of their 10 games this season. So tonight, same old Panthers football, huh? Early first. Ben Carter gets the rock, and what you see here is what defenses typically see when they're trying to stop that slot T. Utter confusion, and then by the time the defense finally realizes what happens, Carter has already sprinted 61 yards in for the touchdown. Even when the defense knows what's up, Jack Pitchford shows off his breakaway speed along the near sideline. 54-yard house call. Panthers hit the 40 mark by halftime and go on to win big 63-17. They'll now face Mercedes in the next round. Sounds like a fun drive. <laughs> Crockett played Rouse up at Bible Stadium, and early on, the Red Sea parted for the Raiders. All alone in the corner of the end zone was Jace Mann. Can I get an A? A, a man. Moments later, Amari Haywood looked as sturdy as a redwood. He bounced off of defenders at the goal line, would not go down. Rouse went up big and stayed up big. The Raiders move on, winning this one 48 to 14. Biblical, 4A D1, Taylor Ducks. Their season comes to a close. Bernie gets the win 42 to 13. 4 AD2 LaGrange. Well, the Leopards season comes to an end as well. Madisonville gets the win 41 21. More 4 AD2 scores. Giddings. Well, tough one there. Waco Connolly, big win 45 to 18. Then Lago Vista. All right. I see a Viking 67. Bandera, six. That's your final. McCallum hosted Waco University. The Knights not backing down in this one. Zayed Al Abdali called his own number from two yards out, but the team from up I-35 said we can score from close range two to the second quarter. The Cadets pass rush was effective. Zayed, look out! Uh, he didn't see it coming. The turnover hurt the local guys and let University get on the board again. This one was back and forth in the second half, but in the end, Waco University pulled it out 34 to 21, the final score. University and high school, I've got to check that out, Jeff. 5A D1, Smithson Valley hosting Cedar Park. Look at that view. Little pan out, opening drive for the Timberwolves. Aiden Arp drops back, steps up, keeps it himself, and uh-oh, coughs up the football. Rangers get a field goal off that Cedar Park turnover. The T-Wolves season comes to a close. A lot of that tonight from me, Jeff. A lot of closing, 30 to seven. That cedar makes me cough from time to time. Too. <laughs> hey, Wimberley, huge win yesterday. 81-0 over San Antonio YMLA. Young men. No, not basketball. Okay. One team looks like they were playing basketball. The other, maybe that's soccer or hockey or something okay, like yeah. that. But yeah, Wimberley's going to move on. The Texans, still undefeated, could make a long run. Gerald, this is an upset here. Gerald was a four seed. They beat a, a, a district's top seed, so a four over a one, not expected in the first round, 32 to 14. The final score there, the scores keep on coming. Luling not able to hang with Jordanton, 28-0. The final there, Luling falls. Lano, Yellow Jackets keep it going, 44 zip over Catula. Yellow Jackets on to the second round. Back to the highlights up in Belton, the Tigers hosting Northeast. Pretty cool scene in the Waco area. First home playoff game for Belton since 2017. All right, so here we go. Big night for Tigers quarterback Ty Brown tossing special deliveries all night long. Slade LeBlanc on the receiving end. 14-0 belt and the Tigers bite the Raiders start to finish. 56 to nothing your final in this one. Tough night for the guys from San Marcos. The Rattlers played one of the best teams from the San Antonio area, Brandeis. The winner of this game will get Dripping Springs in the second round. The Broncos scored a short run earlier, then forced a turnover moments later. The Rattlers knew it would be an uphill battle, and this battle got away from them. Their season comes to a close with a 27-14 loss. Close, word of the day. Mason closes out earned season, 44-7. Johnson City. Their season comes to a close. Thorndale gets the win 41 to 30. Yeah, those Eagles will be back, though. We'll see them soon. Hey, every week this season, we have showcased one local group as our Friday Football Fever Band of the Week. But this week, we're showing a group that basically earned the title of the Band of the Year. 
These are photos of the Vandergriff Band under the guidance of first year lead director Katie Van Doren. Vandergriff won state on Tuesday. They are the 6A Texas Marching Band champs. And if you win state, well, you get to hear your band on Friday Football Fever. Welcome back. He's Tyler. I'm Jeff and Tyler. One of the recent dynasties in our area has been the Regents Knights football team. The Knights have played in the state championship game five of the last six seasons, with the exception being last year when they were booted in the quarterfinals. That major shocker last year happened at the hands of Second Baptist out of Houston, but that loss definitely motivated this team here in 2022. Not only did they finish the regular season a perfect 10-0, but they also had four shutouts and every win came by at least 10 points. Yeah, big numbers. Tonight, the Knights hosting Lutheran South, and South would be a good way to describe this game if you're the Pioneers. Blake Mott looks like he had his apple juice before this one. Hold on tight. Not letting go of that one. Short touchdown run, Knights jump in front. Then on the defensive end, went pow on the prowl. Nowhere to go. That's a sack for the future. Colorado State Ram Regents rolls on 31 to 6. Smithville only won four regular season games, but everyone zero and zero in the playoffs. And speaking of zero, Gatesville had zero interest in tackling the Smithville quarterback. Derek Roberson looked like Derek Henry on this 45 yard score. This was the seniors first touchdown of the night, but everyone knows touchdowns are better in pairs. He found Jackson Hancock on a throw that went 42 yards in the air. Smithville took a three touchdown lead into the break. The Tigers win 24 to 14. 3A D1 by district playoff matchup. Cameron Yo and Yo come. The Yo men looking like they're about to rough up some Bulldogs. Braylon Drake showing off that rich flex. Charlie Mayer on the receiving end. Touchdown Yo men. Later, Drake. Talk about a major distribution. Connor Jeter for the touchdown as the Yo men. The Yo men win 39 28. The Lexington Eagles hope to keep their undefeated season alive, taking on Wallace Brazos and Dalen Washington took the end around to the end zone. But surprisingly, Brazos, the team that entered the game eight and three, shocked the previously undefeated Eagles, and they win this one 35 to 28. We'll be right back after this.
It's the Athlete of the Week, sponsored by Abacus Plumbing, Air Conditioning, and Electrical. And I'm here to present the Abacus Athlete of the Week and Kevin Sanchez. There you go, buddy. State champ. Yeah, I know, crazy, right? When I say that, what goes through your mind? Um, I don't know, it's just kind of cool, uh, especially doing it two years in a row, um, and then doing it on the track as well, and hoping that I can do it again um, in the spring. I mean, it's it's a huge accomplishment, and I'm, I can't be happier. Yeah, speaking of team success, y'all finished runner-up in the state championships. What does it mean to have this team behind you, uh, and how they helped you get to your goal? It's awesome. I mean, every single person here is um, a huge part of, of my success and of each other's success, and we can't do it without each other. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's just great what we can do um, as a team. And I see you're rocking the new drip, Notre Dame, huh? I saw you signed yesterday. What does it mean to you to be able to go to an institution like that? Uh, it means everything. It's been really a goal for since I started running. Um, I didn't really think I would ever get to this point, so uh, just being able to to be able to go to, to a school like Notre Dame is a huge milestone for me, and I couldn't be happier. Well, congratulations, Kevin. One more time for Kev. KVU Friday Football Fever Athlete of the Week is sponsored by Abacus Plumbing, Air Conditioning, and... The Big Save of the Week, sponsored by Austin Telco. We start our countdown with Smithfield quarterback Derek Roberson. Derek does everything on this play except touch the ground. Four defenders had legitimate chances to wrap him up, but apparently those frozen fingers don't work on a guy like Derek. The Tigers move on to the second, part, second round, thanks in part to their star QB. Jeff, I'll tell you what, I wouldn't want to face those Jags from LBJ, and here's just one reason why. Make way for Fatu Makuba, the pick, and yeah, then the six. Big bro Andrews start to Clemson, and maybe that's in young Makuba's future. Jags roll 69 to nothing. Haven't given up a point since September. Mm. Those guys are legit. Do you remember? <laughs> I sure do. Hey, they say if you have two quarterbacks, you really have zero. But at Lake Travis, if you have two quarterbacks, you have a brand new offensive system. Both of the Cavs QBs touched the ball before Caden Leon found Seth Gilbreth on the jump ball. Lake Travis moves on, due in part to some creativity mm. on offense. Guys, now that you have seen the nominees, it's time for you to vote. You do that by going to my Twitter page, at Jeff Jones Sports. I just posted a poll with those three choices. Let us know which one you think should win. We'll re-air that one next week. Tyler, the season's in the books. That was Man. our last episode. Don't want to get too emotional, but thank you everyone for watching. Okay. Thanks to everyone Keep here. Keep the tissues off yeah. the side. He's not getting yeah. emotional. Can I grab one here? Yeah, yeah. Hey, happy Veterans Day to any veterans out there. We thank you for your service, and thank you guys for watching.